Hello, I am Dr. Crystal McAlvin, um, and I'm wanting to make this video today just so that I can actually cover the syllabus with you all um, and not waste class time to do that. Um, so I really, really hope that you guys are watching this before class starts, um, before July 9th, because um, there's a couple of things I'm going to ask you to do um, that will help you if you get it done before before you come to class on July 9th. Of course, if you don't get some of this done or if you have trouble with it, I will help you um, as soon as we, we meet. Um, but if you can go ahead and get it done, then that means we can just sort of hit the ground running and you can get a head start. Because um, summer classes do go really, really quickly and you, you know, of course, are gonna have a lot to do. So if you can get started, it usually helps. Um, anyway, I have made a few changes to this syllabus, so um, when I send out this video, I'm going to send uh, the updated version of it to you all. I did send it out previously, but and, and mostly it was correct, but there's a few things that have changed or updated since that point. Um, anyway, okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to go through this syllabus and sort of highlight the important things. Then I'm going to try to show you our Canvas site um, and a couple of things on there that you'll be needing to access and, and that will be really helpful. And then I'm going to also show you the Mastering Biology site, which is where you are going to see um, all of your homeworks, your online homeworks, um, and access your e-text if you purchased that. Um, also, that's where you'll find the learning catalytics, which is going to be a questioning system that I'm going to use in class. Okay, yeah, so you get the idea. There's a few things we got to talk about here, right? All right, let's go. So, the class is Bio 160, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Of course, it is summer. We're going to be going from, <clears throat> excuse me, July 9th all the way until August 10th. All right, so July 9th will be the first day, August 10th will be the last day, and on August 10th is when we will have our final exam. There won't probably be lecture that day, it'll just be a, an exam. All right, um, where will we meet? We are in the lovely Strong Hall room. It's, it's basement 001, so it's all the way down. It's in the big round rotunda there, um, the lower classroom. Um, that's where we are going to meet for lecture. Um, and then BioLit, BioLit is a portion of the course that will meet upstairs on the second floor of Strong Hall, either in room two, it's right down here, 242 or 232. Um, you should expect to be in class Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 915 all the way to 1130. All right. What's going to happen is lecture will actually meet Monday and Wednesday from 915 to 1030. And then I'm going to let you out at 1030. 10.30, you're going to go upstairs because um, BioLit is going to meet also Monday and Wednesday from 10.40 to 11.30. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to get upstairs so you can have your 50-minute BioLit session. On Fridays, there will be no BioLit. You're just going to have straight lecture, um, 9.15 all the way to 11.30. Um, and I usually, I'm going to need to use every last minute of it, so don't think we're probably not going to get out early, okay? <laughs> um, I will give you a break in there just so we can use the restroom and things like that but we're gonna have two large chunks of, of straight lecture um, here's my information I'm also located in Strong Hall I am a 241 D Strong Hall so I'm really really close to your bio lit rooms right down the hall from them and right really close to this one um, my email is cbickley at utk.edu <coughs> excuse me or C McAlvin I've set up an alias there you might also see C. Bickley at Tennessee.edu. Obviously, that's another one that UT has going on there. Um, this is my phone number, although I have to admit, with it being summer session, I am not in there that, that much. I really recommend using the email just because that's coming to my phone. I'm going to see it no matter where I am, um, more than likely. All right. For BioLit, um, you will get a separate syllabus for that, um, and you will have a separate instructor. I've got BioLit GTA. Um, that stands for Graduate Teaching Assistant, um, and so that's going to be your BioLit teacher and an instructor. Uh, you're either going to have Aaron Manns or Laurel Seuss, um, and I'll show you how to find that um, information. I'll make a list and probably print it and post it or, you know, 
pass it out there that first day that we meet so that everybody knows where to go. I'll probably email it too in case people don't make it to lecture on the first day and they do make it to BioLit or something. BioLit is very important. Please, please do not blow off BioLit. BioLit accounts for 25% of the lecture grade, the total grade. Lecture and BioLit fold together. Okay? And, and please be ready. They, your TAs are going to be emailing you soon. Um, maybe by the time you've already seen this video, you might have already gotten the email. I don't know. But they're going to email you and they're going to ask you to start doing, you're going to have homework that is due every time you come to BioLit. And so with the first meeting being on July 9th at 10.40 a.m., you are going to need to have that pre-session homework done. All right, they're going to take it up. You're going to use it. And start discussing it base your class activity that day on some work that you've done. So you've got to do your homework and come prepared to buy a lit. All right. Um, some other little uh, item of business that I should mention is that TAs might join the rooms together if they wish. Um, this is going to be up to them how they organize it. Okay. So you might be joined together or you might be separate. I'm not sure. These rooms, even though they look far away, they are across the hall from each other, but they connect, and there's a removing divider. So, anyway. All right, required text and materials. Textbook is Freeman. Um, 2017 Biological Science, 6th edition, Pearson. If you get this book straight from Pearson, be careful that you get Freeman. Biological Science, 6th edition. This book is also available at the UT Bookstore. Um, I warn you, if you get it there, look right here. It's, it's the same book, but this is a custom edition. It has a custom cover. Ooh. Anyway, so the cover will look different. Um, if you get it from Pearson, it's going to look like this. So it's going to have this, you know, monkey on the front. Biological Science, Freeman et al. there. And you'll see 6th edition down there at the bottom. Um, but if you end up going to the bookstore and getting this third custom edition, it is like a pink and orange cover. It has a sunflower on it. It says third custom edition. Same thing, okay? Yeah. Um, also, the library has a limited number of copies on reserve. So if you don't purchase a textbook and you need to go over there, you can check it out, I think, for like two hours at a time um, at the reserve desk. You could also purchase this as an ebook. So there's an e-text. Um, and you could get that online at www.masteringbiology.com. Um, some people want to purchase the mastering access and learning catalytics access together with an e-text, sort of as a little package. Um, it's actually a little bit cheaper, I believe, if you do that um, from Pearson directly. However, However, you won't have the book with you, right? You don't have a hard copy of the book, so that's just going to be up to you. Also, if you have had 150 um, with Stan Guffey this summer, he uses OpenStax, so you probably don't have a textbook. Um, you're going to have to make the decision on what you want to do because I do use, use a textbook, okay? Um, Yes. If you are getting ready for Mastering Biology, you will need to go here. Once you purchase your textbook, um, if you purchase a new textbook as a package, it is going to come with an access code. Um, it will come with Mastering Biology access, and there will be this long access code in there. You will go to this website here, and you will register using that access code that you purchased. You will also need a course ID that is generated from me when I make the course site. It is this MB McAlvin 55219. Um, this you don't have to purchase. I am just giving it to you. Uh, but you will need all of that when you go to our site to register. This is what our site looks like. McAlvin Biology 160 Summer 2018 and here you see our that course ID. <laughs> I've got it on calendar view on my course home. You could also have it on list view if you wanted, but this I like. It shows all of the assignments there that I've already got for you guys ready to go. You can join the course. You can start doing these assignments, um, all of that fun stuff. There's also a learning catalytics link. If you purchase and you need to purchase learning catalytics access, you will see that there's a link here. This will take you to the learning catalytics where we will... Um, I'll basically send 
you'll bring a device with you. You'll need to bring um, a laptop or a smartphone um, or a, a pad, uh, one of the tablets or something like that, like an iPad. Um, because in class, I will op we'll open this up and I'm going to send questions and things to your devices and it's going to record your answers and then we're going to look at them as a class and discuss them. It's, it's really good fun. Um, here you could also, so this is the course home tab. From here, you also see a lovely e-text, like if you purchase the e-text. Now, if you had a hard copy of the text and you did not get e-text, you know, you won't have this tab here. But if you did, this would be where you would go to your textbook. You'll see it show up here. It's pretty cool. It's an interactive e-text. Um, sometimes it takes a minute to load, as you can see here, as it is lovely and doing for us now. Um, it's starting me in Chapter 1 here. Pretty awesome. Um, but you can, of course, you know, go to different chapters, go to different sections. Excuse me, if I'd hit the right thing, it would be great. <clears throat> Table of contents. Here you can find all of the different chapters. You can also highlight and take notes as you're reading. There's a lot of nice tools here. You can bookmark certain sections, <clears throat> things like that. Um, I like to point out that there's a study area here. Most people never check that out. Um, this is really awesome. There's Bioflix animations, um, respiration, photosynthesis, cellular division, replication. Look at all of this. Um, these are awesome animations of some of the really complicated pathways and processes that we're going to talk about. So I, I really want to highlight that. It doesn't go um, chapters one through five, but once you get into some of the more complicated things, there you have it. Um, there's also chapter guides, though, for all the chapters and practice tests. Um, there are, let me see, something else that I like to do. I, I really like to use the cumulative test. This is a place where you can go and sort of quiz yourself. Oh, and, of course, it likes to do that to me a lot. The first time I click it, like every time. Um, I can sort of select chapters. I could be like, you know what, I want to test myself on proteins and nucleic acids, and I'd like a 40-question quiz. Click Create, and it just pulls questions out, and you can test yourself. And see, you know what, I think I've got this. What's my quiz grade? Do I have this? Um, so that's Mastering Biology. You really need to figure this out pretty quick. If you have trouble, um, let me know. I will help you. Um, there are instructions, okay? Um, in addition to what I just showed you, let me pull up Canvas. Okay, this is going to be another place. Well, and there I was. I was already on Canvas. Um, if you go to our Summer Bio 160 site, you're going to see Mastering Biology Registration Instructions. This is a lovely document that kind of tells you this is the website. This is the course ID. This is UT's zip code. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to make sure of step by step. So if you have trouble or unsure, go here and look at that. Here's also a link to the syllabus that we are discussing right now. So if you forget anything that I'm telling you, it's right here. Um, in addition to that, while we're here, I might as well go ahead and tell you, um, I've already posted PowerPoints and I think, let me check, study guides. I believe I did. Yeah, I've got intro and cell theory. This covers a lot of the stuff that we're talking about right now. I've got chemistry PowerPoint. I'm going to start off with these PowerPoints on July 9th, probably start on the very cell theory part of this, and we're going to dive into chemistry. And we're probably going to do an activity. I might update it, but this is a base activity here to give you an idea of some of the things I'm going to ask you to do right there in class. Um, then we're going to move on, and when we get to the next topic, here's the PowerPoint. Next topic, PowerPoint, topic, PowerPoint. Then I've also got a study guide there. So you can start working on this study guide from day one. Start filling this thing out, right? Trying to keep everything and get everything ready for you guys so that there's no, you know, nothing missing or you're not waiting on me anyway. Um, like I mentioned, this course is split between lecture and biolit. Um, they have different focuses, although the information will really reinforce itself. Um, in both, um, but they really are separate courses and you should view them as separate courses. BioLit is going to focus on scientific practices whereas and skills, whereas lecture will be focusing on the five concepts and ideas, okay, or scientific concepts and ideas. 
Um, the practices that I, the five practices that BioLit focuses on is things like, it has to do with bioliteracy skills, literature, reading scientific papers, um, interpreting figures, formulating hypotheses, synthesizing information and identifying patterns, evaluating data. So looking at the data in a paper and then coming to conclusions, like what argument can we make from that? Building models, making predictions, it's good stuff. Lecture, on the other hand, is going to be a variety of, inf of concepts and ideas, um, but they will all, everything that I tell you is going to fall under these five big ideas. Um, we're going to be talking about evolution, and I'm going to ask us, I'm going to introduce ideas, and there's going to be many times in this class where I'm going to ask you to relate concepts and information that I've just covered with you to these big ideas. Okay, so this is not going to go away. I know you're thinking, ugh, do I really want to look at these five big ideas? Well, we are, okay? So number one is going to be evolution. We're going to look populations of organisms. We're going to look smaller. <laughs> you might have talked about this big time in Bio 150 um, if you've had that already. We're going to look at cellular components because, yes, populations of organisms, but also cellular components change over time through selective and non-selective evolutionary processes. We're going to hit huge, big structure function. I'm going to be talking to you about structures of molecules, and structures of cells, structures of pathways. We're going to look at structural components, and we're going to see that the arrangement and actual structure and shape of these components determines the function. We're going to see over and over when the structure is um, mutated in some way, the function changes. Okay. We're also going to hit big information flow and storage information held in the DNA is going to be used and is going to be, um, it's going to exchange through mRNA. Um, it's going to pass on that information to the proteins, which then function in a cell. So we're going to see DNA to RNA to protein. So information flow to function. We're also going to look biggest at transformations of energy and matter. Um, because all living things acquire, use, release, and cycle matter and energy. We're going to talk about photosynthesis and respiration. And yes, this is why, because this is what's happening here. Awesome, actually. This is one of my favorite topics, so get ready. Um, systems also is, is in there. It's, it's pretty easy to, to knock to any or to, to attach to any of the topics that we talk about. Um, we're going to see living systems that are interconnected and there's many, many layers and that these layers really do interact and influence with each other on multiple levels. Yes, so fun stuff, okay? Um, how you will learn the material. This is big, okay? This, this is big. I want to just show you a PowerPoint slide that I have sort of directed towards this um, to explain some of what I'm going to be doing in here. Um, yeah, we're going to use active learning. All right, why are we going to use active learning? And I'm going to honestly encourage you to get active with material, not just in class, okay, where I'm forcing you to use active learning, but please, please also do this at home and outside of class. As you study, get active. Do not sit there lazily and passively and highlight text. Oh my goodness, that is just going to get you nowhere. You can do that for hours on end and you will not learn and understand the material to the right depth. Um, rather, get active with it. Draw things. Write it out. Explain it. Try to build a model. Organize it in new ways into a table. We'll talk about this. Why am I doing this to you? Why am I going to ask you to do these things in lecture? And why am I encouraging you right now to do this out of lecture? Well, we know that active learning works. All right, this has been known for a long time. Most, most instructors have been very hesitant to sort of change their methods. Um, but honestly, 1999, this was published. Yeah, I mean, this is related to physics, um, but it was in an educational journal. Um, published by Laws et al. in 1999, like I mentioned. Um, and they are looking at some physics skills and understanding of these concepts. So you see things like force, acceleration, and velocity, and then percent of students understanding those concepts. And they looked at teaching methods using traditional 
versus active learning. If you look before, and of course they tested the students before they instructed them to, so the dark black bars here are the understanding of force. Not very many understood force, right? <laughs> Not, many, not very many understood acceleration. A few more understood velocity, but it's still like a little bit over 40%, pretty, pretty poor, right? After traditional instruction, that is the hatched or gray line, you see there is an increase, okay? But I'm not gonna say that's a great increase, <laughs> okay? Still, after traditional instruction, this is just an instructor setting up there and spewing information at you. After that type of instruction, 55% understood velocity, 30% acceleration, 25% maybe understood force. Geez, not real good gains there. After new methods, meaning active learning, students actually going to class, working problems, taking concepts, solving issues, case studies, new information, and applying what they've learned. Look at the gains. Look at the gains. All right. So the data doesn't lie, guys. The data doesn't lie. So you are going to get active, actively engaged with the material, repeatedly and in many forms. I really, really want you, and I expect you to come to class being prepared. Read the sections assigned for lecture. Complete the pre-class mastering assignments. It's going to be crucial. Lecture is constructed assuming you are responsible enough to come prepared. I am not going to sit and talk about some of the more basic concepts and vocabulary terms. That is going to be up to you to come in ready and knowing. All right. We are going to get active with material. I will give you some base information and I definitely will lecture. Okay. I will teach you. But then you are going to immediately apply that in class with discussions and activities, okay? I'm doing that for your own good to get you active, okay? Now, after class, what I want you to do. So I want you to prepare and come ready and get good sleep and get in there and take notes and get active when I give you assignments. And then after class, you are going to go and devote time to synthesize, link, organize, rewrite, draw, really, really pound those concepts in, okay, and get them more concrete, and then do the same thing. Get ready for the next class. It's going to be a fast-paced summer course, okay? This is a regular semester course crammed into roughly four and a half weeks, okay? Don't get behind. All right, I showed you the Canvas site. There's going to be lots of materials there to help you. I showed you where you can find learning catalytics. And I also showed you mastering. What I did not tell you, well, actually, I kind of did. <laughs> you saw the assignment grid there, didn't you? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay. Questions for mastering. Okay, I'm kind of going backwards. Sorry, I've got this flip-flopped. Mastering biology, the first assignment is due, the first assignment, excuse me if I can talk, is due Tuesday night <coughs> by 11.59 p.m. You will have to go and answer some questions on the cell theory. You will need to answer some chemistry questions, stuff about atoms and bonds and things like that. We will talk about that stuff in class on July 9th. Um, so that mastering will actually be a review. That is going to be the odd one out because from then on, during Summer Bio 160, there will be a mastering assignment due, it says the night before. Let's just correct that. Morning before, always 8 a.m. Um, on, on the topics that we are going to discuss that day. So I'm going to ask you to read and complete an assignment before I lecture. Yes, that way when I lecture over it, it will be very productive, okay? There's a reason I'm doing that. Some people complain, but it's gonna be better for you, okay? Then I should also go backwards and say learning catalytics. We will also start that on Monday the 9th. Um, don't worry, I do offer a lot of extra learning catalytics points. Um, so if you are not exactly ready to answer questions on the 9th, you will not be penalized um, too much. 
but you definitely want to get ready for questions on the 11th because the questions do begin and they accumulate from for every class okay there will be learning catalytics questions in every class so please bring a device to that first class and be registered and be ready to get on the system and um, I'll help you get on in class that day but be ready to go okay um, so we can start that let's see communicating you need to regularly check your UTK email account it says weekly announcements there will be um, more than weekly announcements let's just say I communicate quite often by email so does the BioLit GTAs okay you need to check that you if you know and if you're not receiving the emails it is your job to go fix that okay you need to go talk to OIT find out what is wrong with your account if you are wanting to check Gmail like if you want your UTK email forwarded to Gmail you can also do that through OIT but you need to get that taken care of because um, you're gonna miss a lot if you are not checking that um, if you need to speak with me please use your UTK email um, to schedule an office hour with me. It says if you need to meet and can't make office hours. Honestly, in summer, I do this by appointment only um, because I usually sit there and no one comes. So <laughs> if you, just, you need to either email me or come down before or after class and just say, hey, can I meet with you? Let's schedule something. I'll always have my calendar with me. I'll schedule something, okay? Um, please allow up to 24 hours for a response on your email questions if you email us either myself or the GTAs and over the weekend you need to allow longer than that because sometimes I don't check my email on the weekend all right um, study areas there's lots of places on the second floor strong hall there's lovely tables and seats and little um, collaborative corners whiteboards it's wonderful there's also some places, 417 Hessler, if you're over on the hill and would prefer to study there. All right, grading. Um, this is how course points will be distributed and how your grade for this summer course will be determined. I'm going to have three exams. Um, you're going to have two regular lecture exams, 150 points apiece for a total of 300 points. You will have one final exam. This one is a little bit different than the regular exams. There will be some new material, but there will also be a cumulative aspect of this exam. So it is worth a little bit more. It is worth 200 points. BioLit will be worth 250 points. Um, and you will see the BioLit syllabus to tell you how those points will be distributed. There will be in-class assignments, um, worksheets, learning catalytics questions these are worth 125 points and then the mastering biology online homeworks that you will complete those are worth 125 points all of this totals up to a thousand points okay so that is that is the course point totals policies there will be no makeup in class activities clicker points or mastering biology assignments given um, what I do instead is I will give extra clicker points. Excuse me. That should say learning catalytics. My God. Derp. I love it when I do something like this and find all the problems as I'm covering it. <laughs> well, now if I can type. Okay. So no makeup in class activities. That's the handouts learning catalytics points or mastering biology assignments. Instead, I give extra learning catalytics points. That will allow for missing classes, for getting your device, etc. Um, yeah, so you need 125 points. I will at least offer 150. So there will be at least 25, maybe 30, 40 points extra possibly more, but I will at least guarantee that I will offer that many, okay? Mastering biology, on the other hand, is set up a little bit differently. It deducts 25% per day late to account for late work or for getting a due date. However, after four days, you will get a zero, and I will not extend it unless there is some sort of extenuating circumstance. Same thing with learning catalytics. If you have an extenuating circumstance, let me know. But other than that, no makeups, okay? 
In addition to that, let's go ahead and just move on down the other no makeup. There will be no makeup exams without an extenuating circumstance. And I'm going to have to say that extenuating circumstance will require a valid documentation. I mean, even a death in the family. I'm sorry, but I do have to have some sort of documentation. Just reach out to me, send me an email, let me know what's going on, and we can discuss, okay? If you are going to miss an exam, please, you must contact me before the exam starts. Send someone, me or your TAs, an email. If you don't receive acknowledgement of the email, send it again. Or just be patient. I'll, I'll check. If you send me an email during the exam, obviously I'm in class proctoring the exam. Then I'll email you right afterwards, okay? Um, if it is a reasonable excuse that's documented, um, we will schedule a makeup. But let me just say, a makeup exam must, must, must be done in a timely manner. I'm not going to allow days and days to pass by um, and, and you to have that much more study time unless there's something really, really extenuating going on, okay? And the makeup exam could be any type of, um, you know, structure. Short answer, fill in the blank, essay, um, it, it could be any of that, okay? Yes, um, we will be checking for plagiarism as well. Um, please, please do not do your own work. You cannot copy each other, okay? You may work together, but you must write your answers in your own words, okay? All right. Um, if you are caught cheating on exams um, or in any aspect of the course at all, you will be given a zero, okay? Um, exams will be prepared from all information sources, lecture, textbook, assigned readings outside of class, handouts, all of that stuff. Um, all of this will be posted to our Canvas site. Um, I can show you the grade book since there's no grades actually posted right now. Um, please be aware also, I always have requests for this, there will be no individual extra credit. Do not email me and ask me to do something extra for extra points. Um, if there's extra credit, I will offer it to the entire class. Okay, I will not give extra credit to a single student that is close to a next grade or whatever, or even a group of students. No, that doesn't work that way. Final letters, uh, letter grades will be um, assigned um, using the following standard um, scale. If you need accommodations, please contact the Student Office of Disability. Um, academic counseling is available. Also tutoring. Division of Biology does not offer tutoring services. Um, actually on this one, um, there are tutors at the Student Success Center, also at the Minority um, Office of Minority Student Affairs, and you do not have to be a minority. But there's something I'm going to add to this on the first day of class. Um, if I don't and you're interested, please remind me. Um, I got an email from one of my past students um, that did very well on the course, and she is um, now a tutor for biology. Um, obviously it's not the division of biology paying her but she is a biology tutor um, and she has offered her services for the summer course I don't know if she's charging I'll bring that information on the first day of class and include it on my slides for you all um, yes here is the course if you keep scrolling on down we're on the last page here finally I believe page five of five yes we're almost through it um, here's the course timetable this is going to be very important for you to pay attention to um, this shows sort of the lecture schedule, dates, each date is listed out, the topic that we will cover, and the reading assignment. Please note, I do not have Mastering Biology assignments listed here, but you know when they're due. They're due every single class, okay, except on exam dates. If a Mastering Biology assignment gets moved, I will never move it to be due sooner, but there are times where it's possible I could get behind, okay? You know, I've got this plan here to cover these topics on these days. If I get behind and, and end up wanting to push one back and giving you more time to complete it, I'll let you know. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to try to stay on this schedule. Um, usually what will happen is 
So if you look at it like July 9th, 11th, 13th, that's our first week. Um, BioLit will also meet on the 9th and the 11th. Thir the, the 13th is a Friday, so I'm going to have the full time for that, right? So sometimes, ha, huh, sometimes I get behind on Monday and Wednesday and then catch it all up on Friday when I have the full two hours or whatever. Um, and then I get behind on a Monday and a Wednesday and then catch it all up on Friday, okay? So don't be surprised if that happens. But usually by Friday, I'm back on schedule, okay? Um, and I'm actually getting a lot better and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that that continues. But I'm actually getting a lot better at staying on schedule for Mondays and Wednesdays as well. So I plan to stay on schedule. Um, you'll note the first week is just BioLit and lecture. The second week, Monday, we will have BioLit and lecture. But then that Wednesday, we're going to have a short exam. That Wednesday, July 18th, I'm still going to let you out for BioLit, but that first, well, the entire section of lecture, the 9.30 to 10.30 section, um, excuse me, it's 9.15, not 9.30, the 9.15 to 10.30 section will be our exam one. And it's going to be over all of this stuff that we've covered right there, okay? Then we're going to have, you know, here's a, here's a Friday, and another Monday and another Wednesday, and then there's an exam on July 27th, the Friday. That class, probably the entire time will be the exam. I won't lecture that time, um, but this will be over respiration and metabolism and photosynthesis, okay? Uh, I'm trying to add in three exams this summer. I know it makes the exams come around sooner, but it's less material per exam. Okay, I've had it before where it was a midterm and a final and students really did not like that. They wanted an extra exam. So we're going to do that this time. Um, then we're going to have another section. This section is going to be on cell division and um, cancer and DNA replication and transcription and translation. This is a larger section. Um, and then we're going to have the final exam on August 10th. Okay. Yeah, and here's a little bit of information about that. We'll talk about the exams and the way they're made up because there will be multiple choice and short answer. Um, we'll, we'll do some practices. I'll bring in some little, I'll call them like practice quizzes or I'll make some learning catalytics questions that are quiz-like, come from old exams maybe to give you an idea. We'll work on it. Um, but that's that. Please, please um, read this if you have any questions. Um, let me know. Send me an email if you have questions. Um, let me know if you run into any trouble whatsoever as far as um, getting on to learning catalytics and mastering bio. Um, before I let you go, though, let me just go back to our Canvas site. Um, and let me just show you... Is there anything else I need to show you? Oh, what I wanted to show you, um, actually, you will go to find out your BioLit section. That's what I wanted to show you. For me to see your BioLit section, I have to go to people. But for you guys, you will go to groups. Okay? I can't go to groups because I am not a student in the group. It won't show me the BioLit group. But if you guys click on groups, you will see your BioLit page. Okay, for me to see it, I'll show it to you. There's not anything there yet, but for me to see it, I have to go to people and I have to go to BioLit sections. But please, you go to groups and then it takes you here, okay? If I have assigned you to section one, you will be with Aaron Manns. If I have assigned you to section two, yours will say BioLit section two, Laurel Seuss. Okay, and that is how you know who your TA is. Again, I will make this list. I'll print this list and bring it with me to the first class, but here it is. In case, you know, you once you go there, or well, once you click on groups, if you see this one, this is the one you're in. If you go there, you'll only see this one if you're in that one. You won't see them both. You'll only see the one that you're assigned to, okay? Yeah. And you know that if you were with Aaron Manns, you will meet in 242. And if you were with Laurel Seuss, you will go to 232, okay? You will also be getting emails from these people, so, ha! Um... There is a group page. There's nothing there yet, but you will also be able to see the group page. There can be posts made. There will be um, there can be announcements made here. Um, there can be discussions, files added for your you to access things like that. So your BioLit instructors will be posting things for you here. There's also the possibility that um, 
well, let me just go back to the main lecture page. There will also be biolit materials possibly posted here. Okay, so depending on how they decide to organize that, we'll keep you in, up to speed on that. But that's that's where we are right now. All right. How do I stop this nonsense now? That's that.